One man dreamed of a prize that would unite mathematics. A golden medal, its design inspired by the ancient genius Archimedes, began its journey in 1936. Since then, it has crowned brilliance, sparked bitter refusals, and ignited controversies. It has broken barriers of gender and culture, transforming into the ultimate symbol of mathematics. This is the story of the Fields Medal, where genius meets glory, and history is forever written in gold. The camera closes in on a gleaming gold medal, heavy and mysterious. Its surface shows the face of Archimedes and words carved in ancient languages. But why was this medal created and what makes it the most coveted honor in mathematics? To uncover the answer, we must travel back to the life of one determined man, John Charles Fields. John Charles Fields was born in 1863 in Hamilton, Ontario, to a modest family. His father died when John was only 11, leaving the family in hardship. Despite challenges, he found comfort in books and numbers, showing a natural gift for mathematics. Against the odds, he earned a degree from the University of Toronto in 1884. Fields longed to continue his education abroad where the world's finest mathematicians worked. In 1887, he traveled to the United States and studied at Johns Hopkins University, one of the few places in North America offering advanced mathematics. There he completed his PhD, exploring algebraic functions. His ambition was growing, and soon Europe would call to him. In the 1890s, Fields traveled to Paris, Berlin, and Göttingen, mathematics capitals of the world. He attended lectures, debated theories, and gained the respect of Europe's greatest mathematicians. These friendships shaped his vision of international collaboration. He saw that mathematics could unite minds across borders. Then came World War I, tearing nations apart and shattering trust. Even the mathematics community became divided, with some countries excluded from international meetings. Fields watched in dismay as collaboration collapsed. He believed mathematics was bigger than politics and dreamed of rebuilding unity. In 1924, Fields brought the International Congress of Mathematicians to Toronto. It was the first time this global gathering was held outside Europe. Delegates from many nations came and despite tensions, conversations reopened. For Fields, this was proof that mathematics could once again cross borders. The 1924 Congress ended with a surprising surplus, about $2,500. Fields saw an opportunity and added part of his own estate to create a permanent endowment. He wanted a prize that would reward young mathematicians and inspire future discoveries. That seed would soon become the Fields Medal. Fields died in 1932 before ever seeing his vision realized. But his plans were clear, and his colleagues were determined to carry them forward. Four years later, the first Fields medals would be awarded in Oslo. His dream had survived, and mathematics would never be the same. To transform Fields' dream into reality, the task of designing the medal fell to Canadian sculptor R. Tate Mackenzie. Known for his precision and artistry, Mackenzie set out to create not just a prize, but a lasting symbol. He studied ancient coins and portraits, searching for inspiration that would honor the depth of mathematics. With his hands in clay and tools in bronze, the Fields medal began to take shape. Mackenzie chose Archimedes, the legendary Greek mathematician, for the medal's obverse side. His profile, surrounded by the inscription, linked modern mathematics to its ancient roots. Below it, a Latin motto reads, Transia sum pectus mundoque potiri, to transcend one's mind and master the world. 
The design fused history, wisdom, and ambition into one enduring image. On the back of the Fields Medal, there are no portraits or faces. Instead, bold Latin words fill the center. Congregati ex toto orbe mathematici ob scripta insignia tribuere. This translates to, mathematicians gathered from the whole world awarded this for outstanding writings. The design is surrounded by simple geometric patterns, a solemn tribute from the global mathematics community. The medal includes no mention of John Charles Fields' name by his own wish. Instead, each recipient's name is engraved discreetly on the medal's rim. This secrecy keeps the focus on mathematics, not on personal glory. The design was as humble as it was profound. In 1936, the first Fields medals were finally awarded at the International Congress of Mathematicians in Oslo. The winners were Lars Alfors of Finland and Jesse Douglas of the United States. Alfors was honored for groundbreaking work in complex analysis while Douglas was recognized for solving the plateau problem. The moment marked the birth of mathematics' greatest prize. But soon after, the world was engulfed in World War II. International congresses were canceled and the Fields Medal fell silent. The dream of global unity in mathematics was once again interrupted by war. For nearly 14 years, no medals were awarded. In 1950, the Fields Medal returned at the Cambridge, Massachusetts ICM. The award had survived and now it carried even greater weight. Each new medalist was celebrated as both a pioneer and a symbol of renewal. The mathematics world embraced the prize as its highest honor. By 1966, thanks to anonymous donations, the number of medals awarded could increase to four. This change gave more room to recognize the diversity of mathematics and its growing community. In Moscow that year, four laureates stood together as the prize reached new prominence. The Fields Medal had become a beacon of excellence and unity. In 1966, the International Congress of Mathematicians was held in Moscow. One of the medalists, Alexander Grothendieck, refused to attend for political reasons. His delegate walked on stage and accepted the medal on his behalf. The mathematics community was stunned as one of its brightest lights chose protest over ceremony. In 1970, Soviet mathematician Sergei Novikov was named a Fields Medalist. But the Soviet authorities blocked him from leaving the country to attend the ICM in Nice. Once again, the medal was accepted in his absence. The award highlighted not just brilliance in mathematics, but also the harsh reality of political control. Eight years later, another Soviet mathematician faced the same fate. Grigory Margulis was chosen for the Fields Medal in 1978, but was barred from traveling to Helsinki. His medal, too, was collected by someone else on stage. These repeated incidents turned the prize into a symbol of both triumph and censorship. By 1998, the Fields Medal had gained legendary status. Andrew Wiles, who proved Fermat's last theorem, was widely celebrated as a giant of mathematics. But he was over the age limit and could not receive the Fields Medal. Instead, he was given a special silver plaque, an unusual recognition that showed both respect and the limits of tradition. Grigory Perelman of Russia stunned the world in 2006. He solved the century-old Poincaré conjecture, one of mathematics' deepest mysteries. Awarded the Fields Medal, he refused to accept it, saying he did not believe in the way credit was given in mathematics. His rejection shook the academic world and sparked fierce debate on recognition and ethics. Behind the glory of the Fields Medal lies a secretive process. Committee members remain anonymous until after the awards, and nominations are kept confidential. Critics argue this secrecy fuels elitism and limits transparency. For some, the mystery of the prize is part of its charm. For others, it raises uncomfortable questions. For nearly eight decades, no woman won the Fields Medal. This absence sparked growing criticism about gender bias in mathematics. 
young women wondered if the medal was a prize they could ever hope to achieve. The silence became a controversy in itself until history finally changed in 2014. In 2014, history was made at the International Congress of Mathematicians in Seoul. Mariam Mirzakhani, an Iranian mathematician, became the first woman ever to win the field's medal. Her award shattered barriers in a field long dominated by men. The hall erupted in applause as her name was announced. By the 21st century, mathematics was no longer centered in just a few countries. Fields medalists were emerging from every continent, from Brazil to India, from Ukraine to Iran. The prize became a stage where the world's brightest young minds met as equals. This global reach gave the medal a power and prestige unlike any other in science. At the same time, mathematics itself was changing. Powerful computers and online collaborations allowed breakthroughs once thought impossible. Young mathematicians could now share ideas across continents in seconds. The Fields Medal stood at the frontier of this new era, celebrating discoveries born in a digital world. In 2018, the Fields Medal ceremony in Rio de Janeiro showed even greater diversity. The winners were Kausha Birkar from Iran and the UK, Alessio Figali from Italy, Peter Schulze from Germany, and Akshay Venkatesh from Australia and India. Their stories represented continents and cultures coming together through mathematics. The prize was no longer the honor of a few nations, but of the world. The 2022 awards brought more firsts. Marina Vyazovska of Ukraine became the first Ukrainian winner honored for her elegant solution to the sphere packing problem. Jun Ha, born in South Korea, became the first person of Korean ancestry to win. The Fields Medal was now a truly global prize, reflecting the richness of worldwide talent. The Fields Medal is often called the Nobel Prize of Mathematics. Yet another award, the Abel Prize, created by Norway in 2001, honors lifetime achievement without an age limit. Some see the Abel as mathematics' true Nobel, but the Fields Medal remains more famous. Its long history and focus on youth give it a special place in the public imagination. The Fields Medal has also faced criticism. Some argue the age limit excludes great work done later in life. Others point out that women and mathematicians from underrepresented regions are still few among the winners. The medal is a symbol of brilliance, but also of the challenges the field continues to face. Today, the Fields Medal stands as the ultimate symbol of mathematics' future. Every four years, the world looks to see who will rise to its challenge. For young mathematicians, it represents both recognition and responsibility. The medal's story is far from over. Its next chapter is being written right now.